Let's add a few more details to this then. So we looked at uh, the let me get the pointer. Trade winds, mid latitude westerlies, polar easterlies, we got the polar front, we got the subtropical high, and we got the Hadley cell, frail cell, porous cell, thermally direct cells, indirect cell, kinematic cell, whatever you want to call it. And we also said the concept of angular momentum conservation gives us jet streams. So not only is there a jet stream here, for the same reason you also have a jet stream here which is the mid-latitude jet stream. Um, so let's look at that here. So we looked at the mid-latitude jet stream and subtropical jet stream and why do they wobble? So any little uh, uh, pressure change temperature change, uh, precipitation change, any uh, forcing, uh, for example, would sh uh, shift a water parcel away from its uh, latitude. What happens? So let's say it's at a certain latitude, uh, it's got certain angular velocity uh, and it's got certain vorticity because it's on a rotating planet. When it's shifted in latitude, it goes to a place with a new vorticity and a new angular momentum. So the vorticity conservation would want to bring it back to the same latitude and then it would overshoot and it would come back so you create waves so what do waves need if you have something on the table and if you just push it it may not come back but if it had it was attached to a spring and you pulled it or pushed it then it'll come back and may bounce around because the spring has a restoring force so you have a perturbation force and a restoring force then you can create waves so that's what is happening on the planet when you have displacements of air parcels or water parcels in the ocean and so on you you perturb their angular momentum and vorticity and you uh, create the restoring force is of course the Coriolis or the rotational effect and planetary vorticity which is trying to pull it back to its original position and then you cre create waves. So these are basically planetary waves that are present in many many things and this is also related uh, somewhat indirectly to the kind of features that we saw before. Talking about features, uh, this makes it look complicated to say we kept saying there is energy surplus, energy deficit, we want to move energy to the north, but when we look at these cells it's not totally clear how energy is actually moving to the north. Again, without math, without the nonlinear equations, uh, it's very hard to do that, but we'll try to do that here again by just uh, physics explanations. So here we have our uh, Hadley cell. Upper level air is flowing northward. Some of it is sinking and going towards the poles as well. So we had the uh, subtropical jet created uh, as before. So what we did here was to say all the air is sinking and all the air is coming in meeting and then they are diverging at the surface but in reality this is what happens so there is subsidence for sure but the uh, upper level air continues to transport energy heat and some momentum northward there is also a surface flow northward being shown here which is rising at the polar front and meeting the upper level flow here and creating mid-latitude jet stream and together they're going all the way to the pole. So you can see that uh, in a very simple uh, way that may not be very intuitive the upper level flow does continue all the way to the uh, pole and then at the surface it is broken up into this polar cell and there is the feral cell is not so obvious anymore here but it is there and the Hadley cell okay so that is the polar front which has got a nice uh, front all the way from the surface to the upper atmosphere there is the mid-latitude jet stream and what should amaze you when you look at this is that um, there are westerlies here on at the surface we're talking about surface winds right westerlies at the surface means what okay you may not have thought about it it may not be very intuitive but the planet is rotating from west to east and we said at 30 north it's at 1400 kilometers per hour if winds are going west, to west west from the west to the east if they're westerlies that means they are moving faster than the planet relative to the planet they are westerlies so in absolute speed 
they are going faster than the planet right so how do, how is it possible that including the friction and the mountains and everything winds are going faster than the planet obviously energy and momentum have to come from somewhere it turns out that the high angular momentum that's picked up from the uh, equator which is going at 1600 km per hour being northward is being put down towards the surface so angular momentum is being taken out from the earth at the low latitudes being taken northward or southward poleward in both hemispheres and being put down to the surface to create these westerly winds and you can kind of uh, see that happening here so angular momentum being carried out uh, taken forward and being uh, uh, poleward okay so you can look at it in this way uh, to get a better sense of how the tropopause itself is changing and how the jets and uh, the vertical motion is being uh, um, uh, adjusted to uh, account for this northward transport here so here again we are uh, ignoring the asymmetries uh, on the equator convergence is happening uh, from, from both north and south air is converging with the trade winds and air is rising condensing and creating very tall deep convection which is hitting the tropopause here the air cannot easily push through the tropopause because it's a uh, it's a gradient change temperature is decreasing up to here and then increases above that so you need real energy to punch through that and these kind of plumes don't have that energy so they just diverge when they hit the ceiling so they go south and north here and that air is coming and creating our nice subtropical jet stream and subsiding and going back so this is our Hadley cell and staying with the simpler framework we are saying uh, there is convergence at the pol polar front or subtropical front uh, sorry subtropical jet stream and here it's called polar jet again so this terminology always gets uh, used in both ways so be careful so this is the subpolar front where uh, air is coming from the poles in the polar cell and with the Coriolis and other dynamics it's rising and then it's connecting to the Hadley cell so we are creating um, the northward flow and southward flow uh, to converge into here and create this indirect cell or kinematic cell or a gear that's the Farrell cell and we have a jet stream by the same token of uh, angular momentum conservation in the upper atmosphere but here this jet stream is very strong it can have wind speeds of several hundred kilometers per hour and it can put down angular momentum to the surface and give us uh, surface westerlies which means winds that are going faster than uh, the planet earth itself okay so that kind of hopefully gives you a complete sense of uh, how we are creating these cells uh, we are still on the way to explaining northward uh, transport okay so even though the uh, cells look complicated as I said there is net energy transport towards the poles as required for balancing uh, surplus energy to deficit energy the angular momentum as it turns out need not be conserved what must happen is that energy must move northward so angular momentum as we said because it's picking up a lot of angular momentum at the equator going north acquiring eastward velocities which get faster and faster at some point it becomes so fast that it becomes unstable so that instability uh, actually uh, creates this kind of uh, feral cell so that's a, a different explanation that is more uh, mathematical um, and that uh, uh, instability is losing momentum it doesn't conserve momentum but what it is doing is making sure that energy heat continues to go poleward so we must satisfy the condition that there is excess energy in the low latitudes deficit energy in uh, polar latitudes and we must constantly move energy so these cells all with all their complications they are moving energy to the north 
but they don't conserve angular momentum. Okay, There are lots of details about the dynamics of why the Hadley cell terminates at a certain latitude, why the polar cell terminates at a, la uh, at a certain latitude, and how the cells are actually connected in the real world in the westerly band. We just said feral cell, but this is more of a kinematic cell and it's not dynamic. So that dynamics requires lots of complicated maths and physics, which we are not doing here, but just get a sense of what uh, those uh, uh, simple explanations are trying to do for us. Okay.